I am Ilona Velarde and today I'm interviewing Dr. David Dighton, a London and Nicosia based cardiologist. Welcome David. Thank you for having me. Uh, today I would like to ask you about the palpitations. Yes, palpitations are a very common um, complaint amongst patients. Um, very few people with heart disease have palpitations, which is a good thing. But the palpitations that people get are of various sorts. They can be heavy beating, or they can be very, very fast, or irregular. So they're all over the place, very chaotic and erratic. That's what we mean by palpitations. Uh, if someone uh, has a palpitation, can they tell it if it's serious or not? Not really. Um, the patient themselves can't tell unless they're breathless with palpitations or they have chest pain um, or they feel faint. Any of those three things can be taken as serious. And is there an innocent type? Well, most of them are innocent. The vast majority are just due to extra beats. So people feel this bumping rhythm and they occur at rest mostly. The, about 98% of all people that come to doctors with palpitations have an innocent form of palpitation. Uh, what else might be going on in the heart when the heart palpitates? Well, it's always due to electrical instability. People don't understand perhaps that the heart is an electrically driven pump. There are actually electrical connections to the bits that make the heart tick and it's an abnormality or a dysfunction of these that causes palpitations, but mostly from an innocent point of view. Uh, how can a doctor be sure whether palpitations are serious or not? Well, it's ideal if we can catch the moment on, the, on an ECG, an electrocardiogram, or an electrical heart recording, and then we can actually see what they look like, because there are various forms of electrical disturbance. Um, a whole book has been written about these many different things which can be seen on an ECG. If we can't catch it on an ECG, then we have to test patients. We might have to exercise them, see what happens. We might have to do an echocardiogram, which is an ultrasound of the heart, to make sure the heart is okay. Um, and in these ways, we can usually sort out whether the palpitations are innocent or serious. Let me show you an ECG or an electrocardiogram. This is an electrical recording made from the heart using various little electrodes, um, invented uh, more than 100 years ago. It's still a standard test, and you'll see from the picture that there are lots of waves coming and going. These are the electrical impulses, and it's from these that we can see whether there are extra beats, very fast beats, very slow beats, missing beats and all sorts of other beats which might be interpreted as palpitations by the patient. Uh, what is serious type is most uh, in common? Well the commonest um, in older people is something called fibrillation, atrial fibrillation. The top part of the heart beats chaotically and the lower part of the heart becomes very irregular. That in itself is not much of a problem unless it goes very fast. The real problem is a strange one, and that is that small clots can form around the valves and in the inside of the chambers, which can fly off and lodge in the brain and give people strokes. So we are very concerned these days with this particular rhythm called atrial fibrillation and how it should be treated. And uh, can anyone get this? Well, anyone can get it, but it's very rare in young people unless they unfortunately have a road traffic accident, they might have a chest injury, they might have been electrocuted for instance. Sometimes that sparks uh, atrial fibrillation off. Um, there are other associated features as well from many years ago people used to have rheumatic fever and their valves became uh, fibrosed or scarred and so did the heart and that sometimes used to cause this in younger people. We don't see that much these days though. It's quite important to treat this, so how do you treat it? Well there are a number of options and we don't know what the options are unless we fully test people. We want for instance to know how fast it is, we want to know what the structure of the heart is, all this gives us a risk factor as to how to treat it. In the most innocent forms we might just wait for it to go back to normal on its own, which it does. In some people we give aspirin because it's an anticoagulant, it stops the blood 
clotting and it prevents these clots flying off. Some people need anticoagulation, blood thinning with warfarin and some with a new drug, there's a whole series of new drugs, um, one of which is called apixaban for instance, there's another one called rivaroxaban which require no blood tests at all because warfarin requires regular blood tests and which provide very good level of uh, prevention for strokes. But there is an old form of treatment which we do have to use sometimes which is uh, an electrical shock across the chest. We uh, anaesthetise the person and very very quickly apply a, a shock which puts their heart back to normal. This is quite commonly used in road traffic accidents and for younger people who, where this is not going to carry on recurring. But in older people unfortunately fibrillation recurs a lot because it's due to scarring in the heart and that scarring is never going to go away and so you might try shocking them once called a DC reversion but you might only try it once because it's bound to come back again and then the treatment really relies on blood thinning and rhythm control. Rhythm control means keeping it slow and stopping too much bumping. Okay. What needs to be done with the less dangerous or due to extra beats? Well, these extra beats are really just a nuisance. They're not dangerous in any way. And they do upset people a lot. They worry about them. They think they've got heart trouble when they haven't. So it's quite a big issue from the patient's point of view, but not so much from the doctor's point of view. So we don't really like to give powerful heart medicine. We'd prefer maybe to help control anxiety, which is a common cause of them. We sometimes are forced to give a drug which reduces the number. But these days we don't tend to do that very much. But there is tablet treatment available for it if, if required. What is you can do to confirm that palpitations are harmless? Well, it's not as easy as all that really because we have to more or less fully examine the patient. We have to do their heart tracings. We quite often have to do exercise tests and we almost certainly have to do an echo sounding. Let me show you an echo sounding machine and uh, an echocardiogram to show what it is. The illustration um, here shows you on the left an echocardiogram machine. It's just a little microphone that we put on the chest and it produces pictures like the one on the right. This shows the internal chambers of the heart and with palpitations we're trying to make sure that the valves are working correctly and the chambers are of a normal size because in the more serious forms of palpitation it's they're due to heart disease and we can quite often pick up some heart disease on these echo sounding pictures. Can we prevent them? They're not easy to prevent because some people are liable to them rather like they're liable to headaches. We're not really quite sure why most people get headaches and we're not quite sure why most people get these innocent palpitations. But anxiety is something to do with it, stress is something to do with it, uh, fitness is something to do with it. Is sleep an important factor? Well I think sleep is a crucial factor really. Um, there's no doubt that if people sleep badly and they are prone to palpitations, the palpitations get worse. And of course sleep is very much a marker for stress. If you are worried about many and various things, it will keep you awake at night. And so I think asking a patient, do they sleep well, um, is a very good indicator of, of stress. What would make uh, patients think that their palpitations are serious? Well, there are three things that we are very worried about when we hear, hear them. One is that when the palpitation occurs, they have a tightness in the chest, which may mean that there's a narrowed artery going to the heart. Um, the other would be breathlessness. If the heart goes very fast, and especially if there is heart disease, um, this can cause quite extreme breathlessness. Some people wake up in the middle of the night, for instance, unable to breathe with palpitation. That usually means heart failure. And then there is a perhaps slightly rarer one, which is where people might actually have a blackout, a faint, or we, we call it syncope, a blackout, around about the time they're having palpitations. Now that is uh, usually occurs in young people and it can be bad news. So we would like all these three types of patients, the one with chest pain and palpitations, the one with uh, breathlessness and chirp palpitation, and the one with feeling faint and palpitation, to see their doctor 
fast because we need to investigate them uh, with urgency really. Are they due to coronary heart disease? They're only rarely due to coronary artery disease in my, in, in my experience. Strangely, you would think that um, uh, blocked arteries would cause palpitations, but they don't often. So um, I think the answer probably is no. And what about athletes? Are they more, more immune to palpitations? I think athletes are definitely immune to palpitations. In fact, their hearts go very slow and they're very well controlled. But if an athlete does get palpitations, and I have seen one or two who have had palpitations and faint feelings, it, it can mean something quite serious. So we, again, we need to see them with urgency, even they are very fit. So in conclusion, am I right thinking that uh, palpitations is mostly harmless and it's not a sign of a serious heart disease? Yeah, that's correct. It's, uh, I think mostly we're trying to reassure people. Um, when we test them, we're saying, look, you're fine, your heart is okay, you don't have heart disease. So the reassurance, reassurance element is really very important because, as you say, most of them are completely innocent. I guess it's the best to get checked if you're concerned. Yes, I think it reassures people to be checked. It will also uh, uncover those more serious forms like fibrillation which need um, blood thinning tablets. But mostly the reassurance of being tested helps a lot of people on its own. They often go away and no longer worry about their palpitations. But if they're concerned, see, you must see your doctor. He may refer you to a cardiologist because not many general doctors have the um, have the equipment to test people. But yeah, I think it's the wise thing to get checked and to get the reassurance that that provides. Can patients contact you? Yes, mainly through the website really. Um, we have two websites, one in, in Cyprus which is uh, www.heartsense.com.cy and there is also an English based one which is the cardiaccentreuk.co.uk the telephone numbers and the email addresses are all on there. All that remains is to thank you for watching and for Dr. Dighton coming to help us understand about the palpitations. Thank you for asking me. This is Ilona Valarde saying goodbye for now and please note our other videos explain about other heart symptoms. If you would like to have more information about this subject, why not buy or download our HeartSense book, which is easy to read and contains useful information about the heart and the best diet to eat. In case you would like to read something more technical, you can buy our Eat Your Heart content book from our websites. And you can also download this very short brochure, Worried About Your Heart, which explains many details about heart problems and which is available in four languages. English, Greek, German and Russian. Don't forget to purchase our HeartSense supplement which is essential to even the best diet. Soon we will also have HeartSense tablets which will be available on our websites. All our products and information are available on our websites heartsense.com.cy and thecardiaccenteruk.co.uk